Hello. In 2016, a game was released that took the world by storm. In the first month, the game made over $200 million in revenue. The company that owned the game went up in value by $23 billion. And for those who used it, used the game more than they used Facebook, Twitter, or even Google Maps. And the game that I'm talking about is, of course, Pokemon Go. Now, since its release last year, it's become an absolute phenomenon. Now, for the past 50 years, we've interacted with computers on 2D screens. But by overlaying content into the 3 world around us, this isn't just a new type of gaming. It's a new way to interact with content in the world, a new way to interact with machines. Now, let's have a look at the way we currently use Pokemon Go. By overlaying digital content into the physical world, we can walk around and catch these Pokemon in physical places in the world. Our phone is then acting as this sort of window through into the augmented world, but it doesn't quite live up to our expectations. We're going to be able to use augmented reality to, to help surgeons visualize what the body looks like. We'll be able to use augmented reality for product designers to be able to rapidly prototype new ideas and see those ideas come to life in the world around them. We'll be able to use augmented reality uh, for astronauts or engineers to see these instructions overlaid onto the physical world. And it'll be like we've been given these superpowers. But it is still early days with augmented reality. The promise of how these devices and how this technology will change our lives is profound. But there are a number of barriers that we've got to push through before we can truly make this vision of the future a reality. So I thought it might be have a, good, a good idea to have a look at just what are these barriers. And we'll start off with the way we use this. I mentioned that we currently use our mobile phone as this window through into the augmented world. But we don't just want to look through the window, we want to step through. And in order to do this, we'll need to have a head-mounted display, a headset, something which takes up our entire field of view. Now, while we do have headsets out there that um, are incredibly amazing, such as the Microsoft HoloLens and the Meta Glass, it still feels like we're in the early days of augmented reality, similar to the early days of mobile, where people had to carry around these heavy, bulky devices. So we need something which is lightweight. We need something which is comfortable. We need something which is portable for us to wear all day long. In addition to being portable, these devices also need to be sociable. Now, the rise of social media platforms like Facebook and Twitter have shown us not only how important uh, being sociable is to us, but also how technology can help bring us together. Now, this is an area that augmented reality glasses have suffered in the past. You might remember a few years ago, Google released a pair of their head-mounted displays called Google Glass. But unfortunately, this didn't really live up to expectations. Rather than bringing people together, this created an unnatural divide between people who had these devices and people who didn't. But thankfully, you might also have heard of a company which owns the application Snapchat. They released a new pair of camera glasses last year. Now, admittedly, whilst this isn't an augmented reality headset, perhaps it is one step towards a headset which we can feel comfortable wearing in front of our friends. So, these devices will need to be portable and they'll need to be sociable. What else? Well, humans have an incredible ability to understand and react to the world around them. But until very recently, this has been almost impossible for computers to be able to achieve. But thanks to advancements in computer vision and artificial intelligence, devices are starting to be able to understand the world around them in the same way humans do. Imagine if an augmented reality headset could recognize when a dangerous accident was about to occur and it could warn you to avoid it. Or if it could recognize your favorite celebrity's clothing and let you know where you could buy something similar. So, to recap, these devices will need to be portable, they'll need to be sociable, and they'll need to be intelligent, just like us. In addition, in order to overlay digital content onto the physical world, you need to know very precisely where those users are and in which direction they're looking. Now, have you ever had it when you walk out of a building looking at the Maps application on your phone, only to get halfway down the street and the compass flips around the opposite direction? Well, this is because the GPS and compass in our phones are very susceptible to outside interference, which means they're just not accurate enough to be able to overlay digital content onto the physical world. We need something different. And that's why I'm really excited to talk to you about the work we're doing at a new company called Scape, developing genuine location recognition for the devices which are already in our pockets. And the way that we do this is we compare what we see with our camera with a three-dimensional map of the world such as the map of Piccadilly Circus that we made, which you can see behind me. 
Now, by referencing this 3D map, we can figure out precisely where those users are in order to overlay a visualization of what Piccadilly Circus once looked like or what the Roman Colosseum once looked like. And this brings us back to the content. None of this technology is useful without content which makes it compelling. Now, the majority of past AR applications have relied on overlaying 2D content like photos and videos onto the 3D world, but that seems a little bit backwards. Unfortunately, it's because up until this point, we simply haven't had the tools necessary to create 3D content easily. But thanks to virtual reality devices such as the Oculus Rift and HTC Vive, we're about to go through a revolution in 3D content creation. Applications like Google's Tilt Brush allow us to pick, on, pick up a virtual reality headset and draw, sculpt, and paint in three-dimensional space with the same ease of using a pen and paper. Now, if you're an artist, if you're an architect, if you're a dress designer, this is going to radically change not only the way that you create content, but the way that you work. And it's such a big opportunity for content creators. Each of the top 10 technology companies in the world has heavily invested into augmented and virtual reality, but they can't do this alone. They need people like you. They need people out there who can take this technology, go up there and experiment, explore, and evangelize, and work together to try to shape what this future technology medium looks like. So, what does the next Pokemon Go look like? I always say to people, if you want to know where virtual and augmented reality is really going, all you've got to do is have a look at the visionary work of author Arthur C. Clarke, who once said, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. I think that if that's the case, if technology allows us to be magicians, VR and AR will allow us to be gods. Once the world around us is a digital canvas, the only question that remains is what will you create? Thank you very much.